Good evening, children. It's Granny Macduff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. Once upon a time, near the edge of a great forest, lived a woodcutter and his wife with their two children, a boy named Hansel and a girl named Gretel. Although the children called the woman mother, she was in fact not their mother, but their stepmother. The family was very poor and often did not have enough to eat. One night, after Hansel and Gretel had gone to bed, the woodcutter and his wife talked about their troubles. The woodcutter sighed and said, What will become of us? We do not have enough for ourselves, let alone our poor children. Husband, I know what must be done, said his wife. Tomorrow at dawn we will take the children into the forest to where the trees are thickest. We will light a fire and give each one a piece of bread. Then we will leave them to go do our work and we shall not return. They will not be able to find their way home and we shall be free of them. No, wife, I will not do that, said the man. I could never leave my children alone in the forest for beasts to come and tear apart. Oh, you are a fool! If you refuse, then you should begin to prepare four coffins, for we shall all four certainly starve to death. The woman gave her husband no peace all night until he consented to her plan, but warned her, You should do it alone. I could not bear to take it upon myself. What the woodcutter and his wife did not know was that the children had not been asleep at all and heard every word of their plan. Gretel began to weep bitter tears as she listened and said to her brother, Surely it's all over for us now. Hush, Hansel told his sister. Dry your tears. By morning, I will have a plan of my own. Once the house was quiet, Hansel got up, put on his coat and crept outside. The moon was shining. The white pebbles that lay in front of the house glistened like new silver money. Hansel filled his pockets with as many of the stones as he could fit. Once he was finished, he went back into the house and whispered to his sleeping sister, Sleep in peace, dear sister. God will not forsake us. Take comfort. Just before the sun began to rise, the woman woke the children, saying, Wake up, you lazy things. We must go to the forest to gather wood for the fire. Once the children were ready, their stepmother handed them each a piece of bread. She told them, This is for your dinner. Do not eat it before, for you will get nothing else. Hansel's pockets were full of pebbles, so Gretel put both pieces of bread under her apron. The children and their stepmother set out toward the woods. Hansel fell behind, looking back at the house over and over again. His stepmother asked, Hansel, why do you keep looking back? Hansel replied, Oh, mother, I'm only looking at my little white cat who sits upon the roof and only wants to say goodbye. Don't be ridiculous, child, she told him. It is not your cat. It is but the morning sun shining on the chimneys. What she did not know was that Hansel was not looking for his cat at all, but throwing a trail of white pebbles behind him. When they reached the thickest part of the forest, the woman instructed, I will light a fire to keep you warm, but you must find sticks to keep it aflame. The children obeyed and gathered as much wood as they could find. Their stepmother lit the twigs and the fire roared to life. She told the children, Sit by the fire and keep warm. Your father is cutting wood in the forest and I must go help him. When we have finished, we will come to fetch you. By afternoon... The children had eaten their bread and fallen asleep to the sound of chopping wood, which they thought was their father, but was really a branch cracking in the wind. When the children woke, night had come, and Gretel cried, How will we get home? Hansel comforted her. Wait only a little until the moon rises, and we will then find our way home. And sure enough, When the moon rose and cast its light upon the ground, the pebbles lit up and showed the children the way out of the forest. By morning, they came upon their father's house. Their stepmother opened the door and exclaimed, You wicked children! Why did you sleep so long in the woods? 
We feared you were never coming back. The woodcutter was overjoyed to see his children once more. Not long after, there was once again nothing to eat, and the children heard their stepmother say to their father, There is nothing to eat. We have only half a loaf of bread left. We will starve. We must rid ourselves of the children. We will take them deeper into the woods so that they may never find their way out. We must save ourselves. The man became upset. He told his wife, It will be better to share our last crumb with the children. The woman was angry and she scolded him until he gave in to her wishes. Hansel once again planned to drop a trail of pebbles, but his stepmother had locked the door and he was unable to get out. The next morning, the woman woke the children and gave them each a piece of bread, this time smaller than the last. Hansel put the bread in his pocket and crumbled it into tiny pieces. Once in the forest, Hansel began to drop a crumb whenever he could. He once again fell behind. His father asked, Hansel, why must you stop to look around? The boy replied, Because, father, my little pigeon is on the roof and wants to say goodbye. His stepmother yelled, You simpleton! That is but the morning light shining on the roof. Keep up! They continued on until they reached the thickest part of the forest, where they had never been before in all their lives. They gathered twigs and sticks and lit another fire. The mother instructed Hansel and Gretel, Sit here and rest a while. We are going to cut wood, and when we have finished, we will come and fetch you. When midday arrived, Gretel shared her piece of bread with Hansel, as his was scattered through the forest to show them the way home. The children soon fell asleep and did not wake till dark. Gretel trembled, but Hansel reassured her, Dear sister, do not fear. When the moon rises, we shall see the trail of crumbs I left, and we shall find our way home. But when the moon did rise, there was no such trail. The crumbs had been picked up and eaten by the many birds that lived in the forest, and thus the children were lost. They searched all night for a way out of the woods, but found no way out. By morning, Hansel and Gretel were very hungry, but had nothing to eat but perhaps some small berries that they picked. On the third day, still lost and starving, the children spotted a beautiful bright white bird singing on a branch. The bird finished its song, fluttered its wings and took flight. Hansel and Gretel followed. The bird led them to a small house which was made of bread and covered in cakes with clear sugar for windows. The children were delighted. Hansel told his sister, You try some of the windows and I shall have a bit of the roof. And so the children began to eat pieces of the house and fill their bellies with sweets. Then a voice said, Who nibbles and gnaws at my little house? The children answered, The wind, only the wind, and continued to eat. They each took another piece, one of the roof and one window pane. Suddenly the door swung open and an old lady hobbled outside, leaning on a crutch. The children were so startled that they dropped their food. The old woman came a bit closer and said, Ah, you dear children, who was it that brought you here? Do come in and stay with me a while. No harm shall come to you. She took them both by the hand and led them into the house. Inside, Hansel and Gretel found a table full of food, pancakes, milk, apples and more. They quickly filled their bellies. After they ate, two beds were set with clean white sheets for the children and they lay down, feeling as if they were in heaven. Although the old woman appeared to be kind, she was in fact a wicked witch who had built her gingerbread house only to be able to lure children there. 
Once she had them inside, she would feed them until they were nice and plump, and then she would cook them for dinner. But the witch had weak eyes like most witches and could not see very far. The next morning, the witch looked upon the children and said to herself, Oh, what a meal it shall be! Then the witch grabbed Hansel and dragged him into a cage and locked him up. She went back and shook Gretel until she woke and told her, Go and find food to cook for your brother. He must be made nice and plump. Once he is fat, I shall cook him and eat him. Gretel cried in horror, but she had no choice but to do what the evil witch had told her. Hansel was fed the best foods the witch could cook, but Gretel was given nothing but crab shells. Each morning, the witch would go to Hansel and tell him, Stick your finger out, Hansel, so that I may see how fat you have become. But Hansel, knowing the witch could not see very well, stuck a bone through the bars of his cage, and the old witch thought it was his finger. Each time, the witch became more and more upset that Hansel was not yet fat. As weeks passed, Hansel only seemed to get thinner. One day, the witch's patience had run out. She ordered Gretel, Go and fetch the water from the well. Fat or not, tomorrow morning I shall cook your brother and enjoy my feast. Gretel cried as she drew water from the well. It would have been better to die lost in the woods than at least we would have died together. Stop your snivelling, said the witch. There is no point in it. No one will come to help you. The next morning... Gretel was once again forced to fill the cauldron with water and hang it over the fire. Once this was done, the witch said, We will bake bread first. The oven is nice and hot and the dough is ready. She grabbed Gretel and pulled her close to the oven door. Go inside and see if it's hot enough to bake, said the witch. But Gretel knew that if she obeyed, the old witch would close the door behind her and bake her instead. So the girl replied, but I do not know how to get in through that tiny door. Silly girl. Why, the oven door is large enough even for me. Just watch, I could climb in myself. The old woman pretended to put her head into the oven. And just at that moment, Gretel, with all her might, pushed the witch into the oven, shut the door and slammed the bolt shut. Gretel ran as quick as she could to her brother and freed Hansel from his cage. Hansel embraced his sister and then they danced and danced before they went back into the house and found an old chest full of jewels and pearls. Hansel could not contain his joy. These are far better than pebbles, sister, he said as he filled his pockets with as many trinkets as he could fit. Put them all into your pockets. Gretel obeyed and filled her pockets until she could barely stand from the weight of the jewels. Hansel put out his hand. Come, sister, let's leave this evil place. The children walked for hours until they came upon a wide river that had no place to cross. Hansel asked, What will we do, Gretel? The water's too high. The girl looked around. I fear we will be stuck, she said. But just then, she spotted something moving through the trees. A white horse with a coat so pure it glistened like diamonds in the sunlight, came to the water's edge and took a drink. Look, Gretel cried, perhaps if we ask her, she will take us across. Hansel followed his sister toward the great steed. Princely horse, please help us poor children cross this water so that we may return home. Will you let us ride on your back? The horse looked up at the children and dropped to her knees so that they may mount. And so the children rode the horse across the great river, and when they arrived, they knew they had been to this part of the forest before. And so they found their way back to their father's house. When they reached the clearing, they ran as fast as they could, straight through the door and into their father's arms. The poor man had not known one happy hour since he had left his children in the forest. He told the children their wicked stepmother had left and that they never again had anything to fear. And the children agreed, 
for even hunger would become a stranger as they emptied their pockets of the pearls and precious stones and rejoiced that all sorrow was at an end. And they lived happily ever after. The end. And now it's time to take a deep breath and close our eyes so that we may drift off into a world of our own adventure. Good night, children. <laughs>